Hello, it's July 2022. I have to think about that. Uh, before I get into this video, which is going to be along the line of the feet cut. Keeping along the theme of revisiting my older videos and topics, most of those videos are not public anymore. I want to highlight, cut, highlight. What, what am I talking about highlighting? What am I highlighting? I don't know what I'm highlighting. Hello, it's July 2022. And keeping on the topic of revisiting older videos and older topics, and most of those videos are not public. I have to go through and rewatch some of my older ones. And there's actually two videos that I watched just prior to making this recording. And the, fo the second one's going to be my focus. The first one I just want to briefly touch up on because I just kind of find it unusual and interesting at the same time. And the theme of it is false allegations and how in the later part of my life just a few years prior to the events of calgary alberta i've had a I had a series of false allegations and I, I all i can say is kind of bizarre weird you know i don't dwell on it and to be honest until i watched that video i completely forgot about it and I'll just give you a couple of really quick examples. Now, after I had let law, left law, for example, I uh, had to rebuild my life. And I went through a hard period. Nothing like what I've experienced in intensity and duration as I am or have been now. But I remember uh, there was um, a place that I was staying at. And I ended up becoming a, I guess you could say, a night manager there. And I was finishing up some schooling to work in the mental health industry. And there was um, the a female day manager. And I guess she really liked me and I turned her down. And long story short, uh, there was a lot of things that she did after hours there that I didn't report and I would get in trouble for. And then there was uh, some complaints one night that uh, she really drunk and people had noticed her driving away swerving on the roads and whatever so all I did was just mention it to the owner of the building it was kind of a unique setup of a building but I'm not going to get into it all that and then how everyone the well, I think there was like she had six friends in there completely turned on me and started making things up and falsely accusing me and everything else and I had to deal with that as I was finishing up my schooling and then well, once I graduated from that, then I just left, I left it all behind me. And there is another example when I did go to uh, Calgary, Alberta, and I was um, cleaning public toilets. And I ended up working with a bunch of young adult teenagers. Some of them were in their early 20s, and I really had nothing in common with them to talk about. You know, I, I get along with a lot of people, even like, as I've said, sitting here, I have people constantly approaching me and talking to me either about my vehicle or just talking about stuff. It's, and I enjoy meeting people. I really do and having conversations. But I guess this, one of the, these girls started spreading this rumor. I mean, I can't even remember what the rumor is. I have to go back and follow up on that video but anyway it was a sexual nature so I had filed a sexual harassment complaint because it fit, fit the de definition well the hat all went sideways for me and uh, this it was just it wasn't really a false allegation but just rumors right so just watching that video and listening to some of the stories around that time, just prior, or yeah, it would have been before the May 4th, 2013 event and the December 12, 2012 event. It just kind of like, 
it just brought back a lot of memories of the nonsense I've had to deal with. Now, looking back at that video, I didn't have a clear understanding what or why uh, things were being handled as they did. But over the years, one of the topics that I really researched and opened my eyes to was this whole thing with feminism and how society has really bought into a lot of the false narratives of feminism. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to say about that. Now, the second video that I watched, uh, and I forgot the details of this, you have to keep in mind this whole event with this nonprofit organization with the mental health industry and the May 4th, 2013 event involving the Calgary police and everything else happened a long time ago. And, you know, there's post-traumatic stress that I'm dealing with and everything else. So, and I, and I can't remember all the details. However, I do rely on the independent evidence and for example, videos and uh, notes, journals, online journals, which are time stamped and everything else and all sorts of stuff. I rely on these things to not only refresh my memory, but to prove my whole story. One of the things that uh, this second video that I watched just really impacted me had to do with uh, the timeline, which ties into my previous video to this with regards to um, debunking Trey and James and his little group with their uh, law project and all this other stuff. It had to do with the police reports on how long people were detained and how long, according to them, the events had lasted. And I'd have to really go back and start going over the uh, documentation, for example, from one of the disclosure packages. Now keep in mind, there's four versions of the disclosure package. Four. The first version I remember was, I don't know, maybe a dozen pages, if that. And then the second one was like substantially more. And then with each disclosure package, things had changed. And then it, it was just, in, if anyone's wondering why that's important, when especially for a criminal trial, and this applies to Canada and the US. Disclosure package is the evidence that is going to be used against someone for example, criminal charges. And that's how you base your defense on basically. And I'm simplifying this, okay? So it's very important that all the information that for example, a Crown Prosecutor has is disclosed. Here's the evidence that they're relying on. You can't have a trial by ambush, for example. So if there's, and, and, and not so much with a defense, but definitely with a Crown Prosecutor, you, you, you just can't say, aha, here's the smoking gun and you know, we, we got you and everything else. You, you can't do that. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm simplifying everything, okay? So going through, and Again, there's also four versions of trial transcripts, which is amazing. And the fourth version is the one, I guess, whoever, whatever law clerk or, or court clerk was in charge of the trial transcripts, they actually put in portions omitted by request. And I highlighted the fact how the redirect of former officer Richard Kennel was completely omitted. And that was, he admitted why they beat me, crippled me and everything else. And uh, the story goes on from there. But one of the things that I really forgot about was the time frames of everything. So the time that they alleged they arrived, which is easily doctored. Like you can, for example, I'm just gonna pick some arbitrary uh, numbers here. So say you arrive somewhere at 12 noon and you're there for a lengthy period of time. You can clock in at one o'clock. No one's going to know if there's no one else around, right? Especially if the, whoever is around, they're going along with it. 
And when you look at the time that when they alleged that they arrived to how long from, according to them, uh, lasted, I think it was something like an hour and a half or something like that. I ha again, I ha have to go back and review everything. Uh, but just based on the video, remember, that's right, there was all these discrepancies. Now, I was I testified that this whole event lasted like three hours or something like that. I was in the, in, it's way after midnight. I know that much before I got transported to the police station because they're trying to figure out what's going on. Now, one of the key points that I mentioned in this particular video is how they were saying that the whole, when they arrived, the whole thing threw them off. Now, during this time, the second time uh, of the former officer's testimonies, uh, John Hayhurst, former off police officer, he was testifying something about they thought there was prostitution. Now, and he went on to say something about, based on what we knew of myself, which, I, where their information is coming from, I have no idea. Now, I have video actually of the female stashing money in the center console of the vehicle I had at the time. And she would stash personal items in the most, these things were like in the most peculiar places. And I would, the first time I found it, it was just by chance, I was looking for something and I was rummaging around the passenger seat and I'm like, what is this? And if I remember correctly, it was um, like a hair clip or something. And I don't think she ever wore a hair clip, but whatever. I just found this thing. And I'd always give these things back to her, whether it be items or the times that she stashed money. And because I would always meet her, for example, at a coffee shop parking lot, you know, I'd just hand it over to her, not even thinking twice. Now, one of the things I said in the video, if some busybody seen me handing over, for example, money to her or an item or something, they would assume maybe that there was prostitution, like why that would jump into someone's mind is beyond me, but in the video, I was just um, trying to understand, you know, trying to piece things together. So that could be, you know, someone who could have called the police, which there's a video in an audio recording when the female and I were sitting at a coffee shop and the police just were harassing us, not saying anything, just pulled in front, didn't say a word and you can hear her and I talking and she's she's concerned like what's going on like and they just left they ended up just leaving now actually the same coffee shop so who knows but they testified it was on page 57 that the whole situation threw them off now when it comes to the, the backstory with the false allegation in December of 2012, they were trying to find, now keep in mind, I'm already beaten up, bleeding, handcuffed in the back of a police cube van. And now they're trying to justify what they did. And by doing so, they would try to say that I was I've either committed or was in the process of committing or about to commit some sort of crime of whatever. And they were really bent on trying to pin some sexual crime on me for whatever reason. There's a lot that I don't know. I have big chunks of the puzzle, but you know, the police are not very cooperative when it comes to sharing what they know especially when they're trying to cover up and protect themselves, but I digress. So they testified the whole situation threw them off and now they're talking with the female. So I don't know what was being said between them. I could see them through the window. There's a small little window talking. And then the two former officers went into the, the, the cab part of the police cube van and they were look, they looked worried, like, you know, like kind of like what, what do we do now? And so their mission started to 
protect themselves, which in the end didn't protect them at all. They lost their careers, but they dragged me down with it. Anyway, the female stashing money and uh, personal items, I, I was she trying to set me up because she was angry because I wasn't stepping forward to help them with this sexual abuse, trafficking, or whatever? Or was somebody using her to set me up? I mean, I remember at the time, you know, going through these videos, could have gone either way. There was, there was, in, there was evidence to, to support both, or maybe it was both, a little bit of both, right? Who knows? So the whole time frame from when they alleged arrived by their uh, the official narrative didn't match for example how long they were at the scene an hour and a half now I just want you to think about this for a moment now they testified that the alleged bylaw stop was a pretext and you basically became um, going to use layman terms fishing for something to to write a ticket or a charge about and they testify both of them testified and this is something that this trade and james project didn't even mention that well they, they what the this trade and james project said was they were wanting to issue me a ticket and i refused to give them my identification well one they don't understand uh, bylaws and identification laws with regards to that but two they testified that neither one of them told me what was the whole what why they were there and again I stress they were on a mission and they succeeded with their mission by beating me that part was successful but I they didn't silence me Maybe that's just me being really stupid, or I wouldn't call it brave, maybe it's just stupid, right? So, and there was no crime committed that I obstructed. Now, why would they, according to the, their official records, have me there in the back of this police cube man bleeding and handcuffed? And in pain for at least according to them an hour and a half I'm saying it was longer it doesn't matter an hour and a half if I did allegedly obstruct and assault them it's okay you know here you go and take me right to the police station type of thing an hour and a half because they were trying to figure out what to do with me and how to cover their butts so there's two ex two examples of major issues with the criminal trial that lasted ultimately 49 months to convict me and something else that this trade in James project didn't even acknowledge why would it take that long keeping in mind for example R versus Jordan Supreme Court ruling stating that 18 months for a summary offense maximum my tr and just to put this in perspective that same court ruling R versus Jordan stated for an indictable offense would be 33 months so I even exceeded that an indictable offense would be um, like a, a serious offense. I'm trying to put this in layman's terms. So you look at something like armed robbery, murder, things of that nature. That would be an indictable offense. And a summary would be, well, I guess in the United States, I would call that a, a misdemeanor. So both of the charges I had were misdemeanors, allegedly. So an hour and a half according to their official records we were at that location before they took me anywhere according to them but even there's issues with those timelines I recall so I just want to highlight some more issues 
reviewing uh, some of these older videos and topics that I've talked about. Anyway, take what you will from it. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share.